Morning folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I came out here this morning on the back porch of my log home and set up my camera and I just wanted to shoot a real casual video to discuss what I call full circle. And I just wanted to have a little open chat with you guys, just me to the camera, not a bunch of you know skills in the background or campfires or in the woods or anything else. I just wanted to have this discussion so you guys can understand a little bit more possibly about my mentality over time. And I'm going to put a picture at the beginning of this video that you're going to see and it may shock some people who believe that I just started growing long hair in recent times. The picture that you're going to see in this video is of me and a group of guys in about 1993-94 time frame somewhere in that close proximity at the base of Wildcat Trace in the Daniel Boone National Forest and we were in 18th century gear my hair was long, just like it is now, and this was in the early 90s. And we were heading off for a trek for several days into the Daniel Boone National Forest to basically live off what we carried in, in 18th century fashion. And that's pretty much where I started my true studies of wilderness skills and what we now call survival, bushcraft, woodcraft, and things of that nature. I started out reenacting the 18th century. I started out with experimental archaeology and as I progressed on from there I became very interested in primitive archery and I'm also going to put a picture on here that was taken of me in 2006 when I won the men's traditional nationals in Cloverdale, Indiana with the self bow and that was when I was really heavy into the primitive type archery. In fact the first YouTube video that I ever posted back in 2007-ish, something like that maybe, was on napping arrowheads. So I was still in that archery, primitive archery type mode, and I was starting to mix that primitive archery stuff and primitive skill stuff with more modern gear as my evolution and learning went along. And I think that everyone goes through these phases of learning. And as I progressed, I started to use more modern type gear, the tactical, not practical type stuff, because it was the latest and greatest thing. And I got sucked in like everybody else does to thinking, hey, this is new, it must be better. So I started using that type of gear. But eventually, I came back around to the more primitive stuff and started that experimental archaeological journey again with the primitive skills and the primitive archery, which led me back into the 1800s mentality and the 1700s mentality, and then later on in the 1900s mentality of classic camping and what we call woodcraft today, or where I'm at right now discussing woodcraft and things of that nature. And I think that those guys of the early 1920s, they really kind of had it right because they understood that those pioneering type skills that people like Ellsworth Yeager and Daniel Baird and those guys were teaching to young folks when they started the Boy Scouts of America and people like Thomas Sutton that actually were creators of the Boy Scouts of America or heavily pushed that movement, Thomas Sutton and Daniel Baird. They were teaching our young folks those pioneering type woodcrafting skills that were so important to our ancestors. And I think those guys had it right. And they understood that using some more modern technology of the time and mixing that with the old time skills and knowledge was the way to truly become self-reliant in a wilderness setting. And I think that that's an important thing for us to think about. It's an important thing for us to realize. When we look at our gear and we look at our mentality, you know, everybody says, well, Dave created the five C's and the 10 C's. Dave didn't really create that stuff. It's always been there. Dave rediscovered it. There's really nothing new in, in this field or in this hobby or in this group or community that we're in. And I call it a community because that's exactly what it should be. It should be people helping each other, not tearing each other down. People should be trying to give each other all the knowledge they possibly can. And that's always been one of the things that I try to do with YouTube. And I got my part beagle running around loose today, playing with Rufus. This is Ruby and we've had her for probably three, three years, something like that. She's running around loose today. I got another dog over here. He's still uh, on the leash at the moment. His name's Max. He is a German short hair bird dog, but he is an absolute killer. So if I let him loose, he kills everything in sight. And I got a guy across the road from me, eh, probably five, 600 yards from me. I can look at straight line distance. He's probably got 40 chickens. 
and they're running around in an open pen, I'm definitely not going to let this bird dog loose. He'll be over there tearing them up. So he only gets to go loose once in a while with me out in the woods, and I've taken him out there with Rufus already a couple of times. But this little beagle dog, she's a sweetheart. She just rolls over on her back and wants you to rub her belly. All right, go play, Ruby. <coughs> All right, guys, so back to the conversation. I apologize. Like I said, this is just a real casual dogs just knocked the camera <laughs> okay guys so back to our conversation I don't think anything in this community or in this hobby is new OT the Iceman carried the five C's of survivability with him he had a cutting tool he had a way to affect combustion he had a shelter element or microclimate that he wore in a large grass shawl he had containers that were made from birch bark and also containers made from net and then he also had cordage with him in the form of rawhide and leather lacings and wangs. So he had those five C's of survivability with him and I didn't recreate that. All I did was give it a name with an easy acronym for people to learn it easier. So it was cutting tool, combustion device, container, cover element, and cordage. It's very simple. And the ten C's of survivability were adapted beyond the five and again, the 10 essentials are nothing new. It was created by the Sierra Club in the early 1900s, although their 10 essentials are much different than the 10 C's of survivability. And Gene Ford also had 10 essentials he talked about, which again, were completely different than the 10 C's. Now, I went back and looked at the Sierra Club's list of 10 essentials before I did the video because I wanted to look at how close it emulated what I look at. And the mentality is completely different. I went to two different sites of the Sierra Club and surprisingly enough the number one item on both lists was a map and compass so they're talking more about navigational needs where I want to understand what it takes for immediate survival needs and there's five of the ten C's pretty much on the Sierra Club's list in one way shape or form you've got a compass you've got a flashlight you have extra water so you must have some type of container. Maybe it's not metal. And that is a key sticking point for me on a, on a container is that it has to be made out of metal because you have to be able to put that in the fire to disinfect your water, to make food, and make medicine. They also have fire starter, and they also have uh, a pocket knife. So they do have some of the five C's on here, but they've doubled up. They've got fire starter and they've got matches as two different items. And I would consider some type of combustion element one item like they do map and compass on the other list that I looked at. And as far as their search and rescue element or staying put and hoping someone's going to come and find you because you've left a good game plan, their signaling device is really like number three on the list on one list. And the other list really doesn't have it on there at all other than, yeah, they really don't have it on there at all. Map, compass, flashlight, extra food, water, extra clothes, pocket knife. Fire starter, matches, sunglasses, and sunscreen on a aid kit. So there's really nothing on that list that addresses search and rescue whatsoever. So when I developed the five C's and ten C's list, I wanted to make sure that it was A, directly affected your immediate survivability, and that B, was multifunctional enough to last you a longer period of time if it had to. I apologize about the one dog barking at the two that are playing, kind of saying, nana, 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 I worry about you not. Max, cut it out. So anyway, I apologize if this video is a little unprofessional because of the dog in the background. But I wanted you guys to get that information because what's happened to me over the last 20 plus years, and you can understand that I was practicing this 18th century stuff well before I did this trek into the Daniel Boone. You don't just throw on 18th century clothes, grow your hair long, and put on a pair of moccasins and walk out into a four or five day truck into the Daniel Boone unless you practice this stuff ahead of time just like bushcraft today so <clears throat> over the past 20 plus years that I've been doing this I have pretty much come full circle I started in the 18th century I had long hair I wore moccasins I wore 18th century clothing I practiced 18th century living skills came back and developed the 21st century long hunter mentality almost 20 years later or right at 20 years later of let's bank on that 18th century technology and mix it with some modern items that are that work as well today as they did then and that are going to work as well today a hundred years from now 
and let's mix that mentality for the 21st century long hunter and really get down a set of kit items or criteria for those items that are going to be useful to us in the long term. And it's not as important for anything in this world of survival and bushcraft and woodcraft to have a certain item, a blind horse Pathfinder PLSK-1, as it is to have an item that meets certain criteria. Will this knife do the things for me it has to do? Will it split wood? Will it process game? Will it do fine carving? Will it throw sparks if I hit it with a flint rock? Does it have a good 90 degree spine on it that's going to shower sparks off my ferrocerium rod? Does it have a full tang for longevity and durability's sake? Those are the criteria that I'm talking about. So it doesn't matter what knife you buy, as long as it meets those type criteria. It's the same way with every piece of kit. Now one thing that I do want to say is, I want to show you guys a, a page from an ad, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on this video so you guys can stop the video and look at this ad. But this ad is from Stoger Arms Company in the 1920s, and it's a catalog page that advertises the Marbles Woodcraft Knife, the Marbles Ideal, and the Marbles uh, Expert, I believe, are the three knives on one side, and then two of the uh, Woodsman PAL tools, the civilian model and the military version, on the other side. And it gives descriptions of these knives from the early 1920s, and when it gets down to the ideal hunting knife, it's called, it looks very much like what today is an Army K-Bar, and it talks about that knife being able to split kindling, which is something that we think is all new, batoning a knife. Nobody ever did that in the past. Sure they did. The woodcrafters did it. Case in point with this ad. This knife was made for splitting kindling. It also says that this knife was made as an every purpose knife. One tool option. Again, everybody thinks that's something new. It's not. It's reinvented from the 1920s from Marvel's manufacturing company's advertisements of their knives, talking about them being capable of doing anything you need them to do, including processing firewood, the one tool option. So nothing in this world is new when it comes to bushcraft, woodcraft, and survival. It's been reintroduced, reinvented, regurgitated, but it's not new. And nothing that I do is new, it's just brought forward in a different manner that possibly makes it easier to digest or easier to learn or easier to remember for our future generations. And that is my hope and my goal is to leave that legacy over time of people being able to learn from what I put out there and understand and remember it over time. Okay guys, I've ranted enough or talked enough or BS'd enough or whatever you want to call what we're doing today. I got a dog barking over here, I got two dogs in the lap. I'm going to relax a little bit today. I'm not going to shoot another video other than this one. I've got to prep for a class this weekend out here. We have a basic class this weekend, and then I have some travel coming up fairly shortly after that. I'll be tied up for at least a week doing some filming out here at the school where I won't be able to do anything but that filming for a week with a production crew. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate your attention today. I thank you for your views. I thank you for support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can. Thanks again, guys.